as you know, we have the far too wonderful Lisa Briggs with us for her second yoga session with the Victory Officers. This time she'll be focusing on de-stressing and releasing anxiety through your practice. Lisa is a certified yoga instructor and a terror wellness advocate and is the founder of Those Magnolia Eyes, where she teaches yoga for every level from beginner to advanced, both in person and online. Now, with that being said, and without further ado, Lisa, I will hand on over the reins to you. Beautiful. Thank you, Kate. Beautiful introduction. Hi, guys. Welcome. We're just going to dive straight into it. You're probably on a lunch break. So as Kate said, this is a beautiful anxiety and stress relief class. So my little housekeeping, what you'll need today is grab two blocks. If you don't have blocks, then grab like a nice little sturdy, thick book. It's just for your balancing and for your mind to know that you've got something to hold on to in certain poses. Plus, can you please grab, if you've got a bolster, go ahead and grab that. If not, grab two pillows. I just want a little bit of weight um, underneath you to lift the ground up a little bit higher towards you. So let's begin now that I've got that foundation set up for you. So you're coming over onto the yoga mat to start. And I'm placing my bolster. Again, if you've got the pillows, place them down into the middle of the mat. We're starting in wide child's pose and your knees are separated. So your knees are on either side of the mat. And what I want you to do is just start to adjust the pillow so that you can start making your way down into wide child's pose coming down and allowing your face, the side of the face to come down and rest onto the pillow. So all of this stress that we tend to carry around, it's beautiful to feel kind of a sense of support. And that's why I've started you out with this beautiful assisted child's pose to feel a little bit connected, to feel a little bit safe, whatever is going on for you right now just for the next 60 minutes together, I want you to take an inhale breath and just forgetting about everything that's going on, filling up the space within your lungs, closing down your eyes, take an exhale breath and just release any tension. Take another inhale breath. This time I want you to take the biggest breath that you've had today, filling up your rib cage, expanding out the ribs, and then release and sigh out the breath with the next inhale breath, bringing a state of peace and calm into your mind, whether that's imagining the ocean, whether that's imagining cool breeze blowing through a beautiful window, maybe you're out in a meadow, whatever allows you to visualize a state of calm, allow that visionary to enter your mind now. And with the exhale breath, just let go a little bit more. Really fall into the pillows, fall into the mat. Take another inhale breath here. Keeping that beautiful vision. Exhale and just release the tension wherever you've been holding it. Maybe it's in your lower back. Maybe it's in your neck or your shoulders. Beautiful. When you're ready, just slowly walking your hands back towards you. So if there's one thing that I want you to remember in this class, it's your breath. Because when we are struggling with anxiety or stress or just circumstances in general throughout the day, we tend to have really shallow, short breaths in our chest. So for the next 45 minutes of asanas together, which is poses, I want you to focus on your breathing. It doesn't matter if you forget where the connection should be. It's about you breathing through as much as you can. So removing your pillows for now over to the side and you're bringing your knees a little bit closer together, but keep them at hip width distance apart. This is the opportunity for us to open up our chest, interlace the hands behind your back and bring the heels of the hands together rather than separating the heels of the hands. Your ribs are going to want to kind of bend a little bit and your back is going to want to bow in this position, but shift the front of the rib cage directly over the hips. 
So the hands are interlaced behind the back and you're slowly starting to draw the knuckles down towards your feet, down towards the mat as your chest just opens up beautifully. You're squeezing your shoulder blades together. Just allow that tension to form. Allow your beautiful shoulders to have the opportunity to be back. Often when we're sitting at our desk, we're hunched over and we're in precarious positions. So this is the opportunity for your body and your shoulders just to open back up and realign. Take an inhale breath here. On the exhale breath, release the hands. So this next pose is about releasing the tension that we seem to hold in our head. If you suffer a lot from migraines and headaches, there's a lot of tension build up and it's like you're a little pressure cooker. We need to release the steam out and that's what this next pose is going to do. So keep the knees at hip width distance apart. I'm gonna show you two modifications that you can take. If you struggle with having your arms interlaced behind your back, then you're going to place your hands on either side of your knees. Your wrists are going to be in alignment with your knees and your forehead is going to come down onto the mat. From here, with your hands still on either side of your knees, you're slowly going to peel your hips forward. You're going to suck your belly button in and draw the shoulders away from the ears. And you're just going to pause there on the crown of your head and then slowly make your way back down. The whole point is to keep the pressure on the crown of the head down to the forehead. The second option for a little bit more advanced is to come down with your hands interlaced behind you, forehead down on the mat. Take an exhale breath and slowly start to peel the hips forward, pressing them forward to the front of the room. The hands slowly start to interlace up. Shoulders are away from the ears and you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. Now that pressure should be beautiful. It should allow you to release any tension in the head. So your hands can be on either side of the knees or your hands are interlaced above your head. One more breath here. Exhale breath, slowly and slowly, slowly start to peel your hips back towards your heels. Resting your glutes down on your heels. Take your hands down onto either side of the body and just allow the hands, the arms, the shoulders to be nice and relaxed. Nothing is changing too much, just a little state of more inner peace in your mind. Continuing to release any tension in our face, we're going to release some jaw tension. So keeping your head down, forehead is pressed into the mat, I want you to take a nice big wide yawn as though you're yawning the first, first thing of the day, opening your mouth nice and wide and then release it back to neutral. Your forehead is still down on the mat, opening your mouth beautiful and wide and then release back to normal. This time I want you to take the lower part of the jaw and open up your mouth and just slide your jaw over towards the left side and then slide it over to the right. And just keep that momentum, just to release any jaw tension that you might have after reading a particular email or having a difficult conversation, we can hold tension within our jaw. And then bringing your mouth back to stillness. Opening your mouth slightly, take an inhale breath. And on the exhale breath, just take the tongue that is sitting in the roof of the mouth and drop it down into the lower part of the jaw. Relax your scalp, relaxing your face. Beautiful, when you're ready, slowly coming up from that position, nice and slowly with yourself. Bring your knees back towards one another. If you're struggling a little bit within your knees, then you've got two options. You can just double up the mat that's underneath you or grab a towel and place it underneath your knees or your ankles because we're about to do a little bit of ankle work. So we're not really wearing heels much at the moment for the ladies, but we still hold a lot of tension within our ankles and it's a particular area that we don't release. So what I want you to do is with your knees together, 
have a nice alignment to begin. So you're breathing your stomach in, your chest is nice and opened. When you're ready, the fingertips are still facing towards the front of the room, but you're slowly leading yourself back. So the fingers are facing towards the front of the room, elbows are slightly bent. And from here, you're just going to slowly, gently lift your knees up. They can be just a couple of inches off the ground, or you can feel free to explore what it feels like to really lift your knees up. And you'll feel that, that little gentle pull of the ankles here. Then when you're ready, releasing down. Beautiful. Coming forward, come up into a high tabletop and just beat out your feet just to release, to kind of counterbalance the move that we just did. Lifting up your ankles now and just take some nice little circles with your feet. Go in one direction and then go in the opposite direction. Beautiful. Let's start to set up our nice foundation for a high tabletop position. So from here, looking down at your hands, make sure that your wrists are directly underneath your shoulders. Have a look down at your knees. Make sure that your knees are directly underneath your hips. And then have a little glance back at your feet and try and align your middle toe with your ankle and your heel with your knee. And then have a look at the other foot. Make sure that the middle toe is in alignment with the heel and the heel is in alignment with the knee. And that's your beautiful foundation already set for high tabletop. Let's begin some rounds of cat and cow. So with an inhale breath, I want you to slowly draw your stomach down lifting your tailbone up towards the sky, gaze looks out. Ready to take an exhale breath, start to curl your tailbone under and we'll just do the first round nice and slow, curling one vertebrae at a time, rounding out the shoulders, tucking your chin down onto your chest. Beautiful. Feel free to speed it up or slow it down as much as you need. Your inhale breath as you arch your back lifting up the tailbone in cow position. Exhale breath as you slowly start to curl your spine, releasing that tension. It should feel so beautiful, this pose for you. If it feels a little bit tight, then just be gentle. You don't have to drop the stomach down as much as I am. and You don't have to curl your spine as much. It can just be micro movements. This is your beautiful practice and only you know your body. So being gentle, being kind. Good. And then when you're ready from here, tucking your toes under, let's meet in downward facing dog. So you're shifting your hips up and back towards your heels. Your heels are drawing down towards the mat. Suck your belly button in. Have a beautiful long spine here. The hands are pushing away the upper body. Inhale and exhale breath. Go ahead and drop one heel at a time, bending your knees one at a time, taking in those beautiful inhale and exhale breaths, releasing all of that tension, all of the stress that is clouding your mind. Breathing through. When the mind begins to relax, then the body can start to open up and stretch out. Beautiful. From here, see what it feels like to walk your hands back towards your feet. And you can really take your time to explore, coming up onto your fingertips, if that feels okay. And then I want you to just forward fold, allowing the upper body to just fold and be heavy. Crown of the head facing down towards the mat. If you need to take a micro bend in the knees, if you're feeling a little bit tight in the hamstrings, feel free to do that. Interlacing the hands. Slowly take the interlaced hands behind the nape of the neck and draw your elbows just in front of your shoulders here. Don't pull your head down too much. Just allow the weight of the hands to be enough to add just a little bit more of a stretch in the neck. Breathing through. Beautiful full breaths. 
couple more breaths here. One more breath. Good. Release the hands back down towards the mat. Slowly and gently, one vertebrae at a time, start to peel yourself up into a standing position. Nice and slow and gentle. Beautiful. Take a couple of shoulder rolls here. Make it purposeful. So reach your shoulders up towards your ears, squeeze your shoulder blades together and draw them down your spine. Good. Continue to breathe. And then reverse and go in the opposite direction. It might feel so beautiful for you right now just to have this shoulder roll. Excellent. When you're ready, walk towards the front of the mat. From here, we're going to stretch out a little bit of our lateral side of the body. You can keep yourself turned towards the front of the room. I'm going to turn this way just so you can see what I'm doing. So from here, take an inhale breath. Reach the arms up overhead. Gaze looks up. Right hand grabs hold of the left wrist. And gently just pull yourself up just to create some beautiful length in your spine. And then from here, gently pull the left hand over towards the right and you should get that beautiful stretch all through the arms, all the way down the lateral side of the body towards the obliques area. Just breathing through here. Being conscious to have your left elbow facing up towards the ceiling and that will allow you just to go into the stretch a little bit deeper. You're feeling like there's a little twang in your lower back and just come out of the pose a little bit and just go into a more of a micro stretch rather than coming all the way over. Coming back to neutral, pause here and just allow your fingertips to reach a little bit higher. Good. Take that inhale breath there. Left hand grabbing hold of the right wrist and gently start to pull that right arm over towards the left, nice and slow. Being mindful to connect with your body, see what's going on for you. If you're feeling a little bit tight, remember you can always just come out a little bit more. Keeping that right elbow turning up towards the ceiling. Beautiful. Reaching and stretching the arms again. Take an exhale breath as you lower the hands down towards the side body. From here, let's get rid of some tension in our neck. So often we're not really stretching our neck, especially as desk workers. So this is an opportunity for you to just bring some new movement and fluid back into your neck socket, into your neck area. So often you see elderly people when they turn their head, they have to turn their whole body. So we wanna try and prevent that. And that's what these beautiful poses are all about. So when you're ready, remembering to breathe, melting your shoulders down, having beautiful relaxing thoughts as you slowly start to trace your head around, creating some beautiful circles. You might feel into some areas of your neck that are a little bit raw, they might be a little bit tender, so just be gentle, not allowing the movement to be forced, but the weight of the head is just enough to kind of bring some new life new energy back into your beautiful neck. When you're ready, switch and reverse, go in the opposite direction, keeping your shoulders down. If you suffer from a little bit of vertigo or you feel a little bit dizzy, keep the eyes open. Good, just a couple more rounds. Lovely. Now let's go into our standing poses. So the reason why I have designed this sequence for you is because I want you to have the opportunity to forget about the thing that is causing you anxiety. Maybe it's one thing, maybe it's a whole bunch of things, but these poses are balancing poses. So now's the opportunity for you to grab your block or your, your book because we're going to be moving through and doing a couple of balance poses to get you out of your head a little bit and focusing on trying not to fall. <laughs> so
So coming to the front of the mat, have a nice strong foundation with your Tadasana. So bring your big toes together. They're coming into touch. Your ankles are coming into touch. And instead of kind of folding down into your spine and congesting your vertebrae, really lift yourself up. Roll the shoulders back. Allow your spine to have beautiful length. Place your hands on your ribs and imagine that you're lifting your rib cage up and out of your hips. Tuck your pelvis under. Beautiful. Allow the hamstrings to kind of pull into the hips away from the knees. And that is your beautiful, strong mountain pose. Tadasana in Sanskrit is mountain pose. So when you're ready, take an inhale breath. Sweep the arms up overhead. Take an exhale breath. Take the hands wide as you fold forward from a straight spine. Inhale breath, lower the hands down. Take the left foot back into runner's lunge. Good, take the right foot back into high plank and just feel that high plank for a moment. Round out the shoulders. Excellent, drop the knees, untuck the toes. From here, we're going into Chaturanga Dadasana. What I want you to do is shift your shoulders forward over your fingertips, squeeze your elbows into your ribs as you lower down. Beautiful, you should be on your belly now. Hips are on the mat. Have a look down at your hand for me and make sure that your elbow is directly stacked on top of your wrist. Beautiful, from here, slowly start to draw the elbows in towards one another. Take the shoulder blades together and draw them down the spine. Take an inhale breath and just slowly start to lift your shoulders up away from the mat. If it feels okay for you, you can go a little bit higher into Cobra or come all the way up into Upward Facing Dog. Take an exhale breath here into Downward Facing Dog and just pause in here for a moment. Beautiful. Bend your knees, gaze looks forward in between your thumbs, just slowly baby steps towards the front of the mat. Excellent, slowly coming up through to Dasana. Remember your big toes are touching, roll the shoulders back here, excellent. So we are moving through and doing warrior one. So this is a beginner's pose, even though I find it to be the most challenging of poses in standing. Keeping your right foot where it is, I want you to just step your left foot back and it's not going as wide as what we would do for warrior two. Instead of pretending like you're on a tightrope and heel and heel are in alignment, I want you to have your right foot just slightly off balance. So your heels shouldn't be in alignment. So have a look down at that now. Your left toe is turned at a 45 degree angle. Place your hands on your hips and slowly start to peel your hips forward. So they should be nice and square in front of you. And then when you feel like you've kind of got the hang of that, then activate the left glute. And that's going to be great support for you. When you're ready, extend the arms up overhead, hands are touching in prayer position, and then slowly start to bend forward. Only allow the knee to be in alignment with the ankle. Continue to activate that left glute. This is your beautiful, strong warrior pose. You might really need this bit of strength today, coming from within, breathing through, really lifting up, trying not to arch the spine too much. Excellent. This is the opportunity for you to have your blocks in front of you, looking ready to go into warrior three. So if you want to stay in this pose while I demonstrate what we're doing, you're simply lifting the back leg and your hands can be in prayer position in front of you and you're just slightly lifting your leg up. Your foot is nice and flexed. If you've got the blocks, they're going to be directly under your shoulders or if you've got just one shoe box or if you've got a book, all you need is that one there just to hold the balance. Keep that concentration. Keep the hips nice and square. Take an inhale breath. Beautiful. Exhale breath, lower that left foot <clears throat> and come into your forward fold. Exhale breath, beautiful. <clears throat> 
and just pausing here, feeling the new energy within your body, feeling that your body is slightly warmer, feeling into the sensations as you close your eyes. Beautiful, slowly peeling yourself up through to Dasana, one vertebrae at a time. Inhale breath, reach the arms up overhead. Exhale breath. Take the arms on either side of the body. Bring your hands into prayer position in front of the chest and just close your eyes here. Reconnect back in with yourself. Take an inhale breath for four counts in through the nose. Hold the breath for four counts. Exhale out through the mouth, four counts. This beautiful pranayama breathwork technique is beautiful for releasing anxiety. Take another inhale breath in through the nose, four counts. Hold the breath, four counts. When you're ready, release the breath out of the mouth. Good, one more, inhale breath in through the nose, four counts. Hold the breath, four counts, and just release that last bit of tension out of your mouth, four counts. Beautiful. Releasing the arms down to either side of you, keeping your left foot, so the left toes are facing towards the front of the room. Let's switch over and do the other side. So have your blocks ready to come over the top into your warrior three position. So stepping the right foot back, remember your heels are just slightly off balance so that it's not like you're on a tight rope and your heel and heel are lined up. You've got your left foot slightly off towards the left. The right foot, the toes are facing at a 45 degree angle. So if you place your hand, your elbow on your hip, and you extend your hand out from the elbow, that's kind of the alignment that I want your foot to be in. When you're ready, start to place your hands on your hips and square your hips off. Even if you have to put your left thumb into the upper crease of your left thigh and draw that thigh back so that your hips can be in alignment. Now, when you think you've got that, activate the right glute Bend into that front knee. Remember the knees are coming over the ankle. Take the hands into prayer position above the head and just feel that beautiful strength coming through you. A lot of the time they say before an interview or before a hard task that you're about to accomplish, stand as though you're a superhero with like Superman and it just changes the chemicals being fired off in your brain. And it sends signals of confidence. And that's what this pose is all about. It's about you bringing through your inner confidence exactly when you might need it. Ready to go into your warrior three position. So you're going to lift off that back foot and you're going to hover onto the front standing leg. When you're ready, hands coming down into prayer position in front of the chest, or you can grab a hold of your block your book, or if you've got a shoe box there in front of you, just to kind of balance yourself out. Really focusing on one point on the mat, on the floor in front. One more breath here. Beautiful. Lower that leg down and come into a forward fold. From here, I just want you to trace your hands from left to right as though you're kind of just going through, tracing your hands through beautiful, cold running water. Maybe you're at the beach. Maybe you're by your favorite lake. Tucking your chin down towards your chest, crown of the head facing down towards the mat. Allowing your upper body to be beautiful and heavy, imagining that water. Visualizing it in your mind, what it feels like to run your hands, your fingers through that cool running water. Beautiful. When you're ready, bend your knees, take your hands onto either side of your feet, step your right foot back into high runner's lunge, take your left foot back to join in high plank. 
Pause here in high plank, round out the shoulders, push the heels back towards the back of the room and activate your core. Drop your knees, untuck your toes, shift your weight forward, squeeze your elbows into the ribs, lower yourself down, Chaturanga Dadasana. Coming up into baby cobra, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, breath, downward facing dog. Beautiful. One more breath here. Exhale, breath, release. When you're ready, come up onto the balls of the feet. Extend your right leg up towards the sky. And then I want you to bend the knee. Flex the foot, but keep the shoulders in alignment with each other. You're just opening up your hip here. Extend the leg back out. Draw the right knee in towards the chest. Gaze looks forward. And then step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. Beautiful. Take a little breath here. When you're ready, drop the back heel down, keeping the foot at a 45 degree angle. We're coming up into warrior two. So reach the arms up and then take the left hand back and open up the body here. You're bending into that front knee. Your entire upper body is turned towards the side, holding that beautiful, strong foundation. Good. Breathing here for me. When you're ready, stretch out the front leg, reverse warrior. Left hand drops down. Right arm reaches up towards the sky. Breathing through. Releasing all of that tension. When you're ready, coming through Trikonasana. So pretend like somebody is pulling your right arm forward. And then you've got somebody else pulling your left hip back. You've kind of got that momentum enough to drop the hand down. Maybe it lands on top of the knee, maybe below the knee, never on the knee. Or maybe it kind of just rests on your ankle. That left arm is stretched up towards the sky. Taking those beautiful full breaths, releasing the tension with each exhale breath. Beautiful. When you're ready, slowly coming up, extending the arms off to either side of you. From here, you're going to turn the right foot and it's going to face in the same direction as the left side. So both of your feet are parallel now. We're going into a wide side angle pose. This is a favorite among many <laughs> because you just, you're getting that beautiful stretch of the inner thighs towards the back of the hamstrings as well. So you've got a couple of options. Depending on your flexibility, you can grab your book, your shoe box or your block or your book, sorry. And just coming down from a flat spine, you're kind of just bending from the hip, lowering yourself down. You might wanna pause here. You might wanna just have your hands on your hips. Your hands can either come down. If you feel like you really need to stretch out your shoulders today, then you can take the option that I'm taking, which is interlacing the hands behind your back. You can have the heels of the hands touching or separated. Slowly start to tilt yourself forward from a straight spine, dipping your head down, crown of the head facing down towards the mat, and the hands are slowly peeling up towards the sky. Feel free to squeeze the shoulder blades together. That will allow the shoulders to be moved away from the ears. And just enjoy this beautiful stretch. Inhale and exhale breaths. Beautiful. Lowering the hands down if you've got them above your head. For everyone, placing your hands on your hips slowly start to peel yourself back up. Excellent. Heel and toe your feet together. And then walk forward to the front of the mat. You should feel that beautiful stretch. You can feel free to shake your legs a little bit here. All right. From here, coming into your strong mountain pose, your Tadasana. Big toes are touching, ankles are touching. 
This time I want you to really focus on your breaths. Take an inhale breath, reaching the arms up overhead, gaze looks up. Even if you want to have a little smile come across your face, it's going to make you feel so much better. Take an exhale breath, swan dive the hands down from a flat back, coming all the way down to the mat. Bend your knees, step your left foot back this time into your high runner's lunge, right foot joins into high plank. Drop your knees, untuck your toes, shift your weight forward, and then slowly start to melt down. Chaturanga Dadasana. Take an inhale breath here. Choose if you want to take the option of baby cobra, cobra, a little bit more lifted, or upward facing dog. Take an exhale breath here. Really feel the breath leave the body as you go into downward facing dog. Beautiful. When you're ready, come up onto the balls of the foot and just pause here for a moment. When you're ready, left leg extends up towards the sky. Bend the knee, flex the foot. Keep the shoulders nice and square. Excellent. Extend the leg back up towards the ceiling. Draw the knee in towards the chest and step the right foot forward to the front of the room. Left foot forward, sorry, towards the front of the room. Drop the back heel down, keeping that nice 45 degree angle, ready to go into your warrior two. Reach the arms forward, take the right arm back behind you and bend into that front knee, keeping the upper body beautifully and turn towards the right side. Gaze looking out over that left hand. One more breath here. Feeling that strength and energy coming through you. Good. When you're ready, dropping the right hand down onto that right calf, reaching the left arm up towards the sky, full of life, full of beautiful energy. Then go through your trikonasana as though somebody is pulling you forward and somebody is pulling you back. Lower the left hand down. Reach the right arm up towards the sky. Good. You should have the option of placing the hand below or above the knee. Never on the knee. When you're ready, bend that front leg. Windmill the hands down and just place your hands on either side of the left foot. Ready to take the left foot back into high plank. Excellent. Drop down into your knees. Sink yourself back into child's pose. Forehead coming down onto the mat. Arms are extended out in front of you. Just catching your breath here. Inhale and exhale breaths. Beautiful. Coming up through to high tabletop, tucking your toes under. Extend your legs, downward facing dog. Gaze looks forward, bend your knees and then just walk your feet forward to the front of the mat. Coming up through to Dasana nice and slowly, roll the shoulders back, beautiful. We are doing one last pose, ready for our cool down. So this is our tree pose. This is all about getting you out of your head space. So, Already pick one part of your apartment, your room, your home that I want you to focus your energy on. It should be a stable thing that you're looking at, not your little dog <laughs> like my dog running around. Focus on one stable thing. When you're ready, shifting your weight over onto your left leg. Slowly start to rise your right knee up towards your chest. Hands come around and gently pull your right knee in towards your chest or wherever it lands. It doesn't matter if it doesn't come all the way up to your chest. Then grabbing hold of the ankle, turning the knee as though you're opening a door and you can place your foot either below the knee on the ankle, or you can grab hold of it and just play around with what it might feel like to place your foot on your upper thigh. And you might need to readjust a little bit Focusing on that one position in front of you. 
Your hands can be in prayer position in front of your chest or extend your arms up overhead. And just focusing here, breathing through, trying not to hold the breaths. Beautiful, I'm sure you are doing so well. Lower the hands, grab hold of the ankle if it's on your upper thigh and then extend the knee out in front and lower down. Beautiful. Give your legs a little bit of a shake, ready to go onto the other side. Shifting your weight over to the right, slowly start to draw your left knee up towards your chest. Hands wrap around, gently pull that knee in towards the chest. When you're ready, grabbing hold of your ankle, placing it on your upper thigh or below the knee or on your ankle. And just focus on that one point in your room. Hands in prayer position in front of the chest or arms extended up towards the sky. One more breath here. Excellent. Lower the hands, grab hold of the foot, placing it down nice and gently onto the mat. You did so well. And again, you can see these balance poses. You have no opportunity to think about any stressful or anxious thought. Coming down onto your bottom. I'm just going to slowly run through a couple of cool downs. So this is called your bound angle pose. Bringing the bottoms of your feet together. Hands can wrap around your toes or the hands can be on your ankles. You're slowly just kind of arching the spine a little bit, drawing your forehead down towards your feet. So if your hands are on your ankles, feel free to gently push your knees down with the aid of your elbows and just breathing here. A couple of breaths. Good. Extending your legs out in front. Just see what it feels like to place your hands behind you, fingertips facing towards the front of the room or you can come up onto the domed fingertips and really create some life in your spine by lifting yourself up through a straight spine, your feet are flexed. If you feel nice and flexible, you can walk your hands out from a straight spine and just feel into wherever feels really nice for you to hold this pose, even if it is on your feet. And later, you know, before bed or at the start of the morning, these stretches are really, really good for you especially if you want to grab a scarf or a belt and place it around the balls of your feet and use the aid of the strap to keep a nice straight spine. One more breath here. Good. Picking up your right knee, bending it in towards your chest and taking that foot over towards the left side. Your right hand comes behind. Lift your left arm up towards the sky and slowly start to bend the elbow and place it just in the nook behind that right knee and then go into a supine twist. Gaze looking back. Always having a straight spine in these types of twists is really good for your lower back. You're not going to cause damage there. Beautiful, extending that leg back out, switching over to the other side. Left knee hugs in towards you. Take that foot over to the other side. Left hand comes back. Reach your right arm up towards the sky. Bend the elbow and then just gently looking back. Keep the right foot nice and flexed. And these beautiful twists are great for detoxification. If you've had a wine the night before or if you just feel like you're a little bit burned out and you need to be a little bit replenished. Doing twists with the body is a great way to massage the inner organs, to purify and just cleanse and release any toxins that are building up too much. Good, releasing yourself down. Legs extend, slowly making your way down onto the mat. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a nice little tight squeeze with your knees and then trace your knees over towards the right to the left. This is great for lower back release if you ever suffer from lower back tension. 
And this is a beautiful way just to give yourself a little bit of a self massage. Extend the arms onto either side of your body. Squeeze your stomach in to protect your lower back and draw your knees down towards the left side. Gaze looking over towards the right, keeping your right shoulder down onto the mat. Inhale and exhale breaths. Squeezing your stomach back in, draw the knees back up to neutral and then keep them going over towards the right side. Allow them to fall down onto the right side of the body. Gaze looks over towards the left. Left shoulder is down on the mat. Beautiful. Bringing the knees back. Extend the legs. Palms of the hands facing up towards the sky. Lift your shoulders and tuck your shoulder blades in and underneath yourself. We're just going to be here for a brief shavasana. Just a minute or two. Allow your thoughts to be in the present moment and how you can do that is focus on your breath. Take an inhale breath in through the nose. Exhale breath and just release and let go any tension that still is kind of a residue after that asana poses that we did. Take another inhale breath, softening your scalp, your face. Exhale breath, release any tension. Keeping your thoughts present. Slowly start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. You can feel free to stay here in Shavasana. If you feel like you just really need Shavasana today, stay here. For everyone else, keep your eyes closed, but slowly come up into seated position. Keeping your eyes closed, staying connected within yourself. Coming into seated position, bowing your head slightly, having your gaze look down, slowly open your eyes, take an inhale breath. Exhale breath, release. Bring your hands into prayer position in front of your chest, bowing your head down, saying to ourselves and to each other, Namaste. You should be so proud of yourself for doing that beautiful class. I hope that you found the balances to be really beautiful and getting you out of your head, as I said. So hope you're feeling a little bit more aligned. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was wonderful. I feel like it looks really daggy. <laughs> Yeah, I should have said to everyone, make sure that you have a low ponytail for this one. <laughs> it's all good. It's it all just means, oh, all these beautiful comments coming in. Thank That's you guys lovely. so much. Now, um, as I said, we do have some time for questions. So if you do have a question for Lisa, please feel free to um, either raise your hand and I can take you off uh, mute and show your face um, and you can ask your question directly. Otherwise, pop them in the chat box or below in the Q&A box. And just while you're doing that, I will ask you, Lisa, where, what, can you let us know where we can find you, how we can do your classes, what you've got going on at the moment? Yeah, sure. So I'm Sydney based. So I have four in-person classes, two in my new Redfern studio next week and two in Centennial Park, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. and then we meet for a coffee after. But then every single one of my classes every day is online. So go to thosemagnoliaeyes.org and you can see everything that I do on there. Plus okay. Instagram, I'm always doing something on Instagram. <laughs> awesome. Well, I will put all those details in a follow-up email as well. Um, 
And it looks like I feel like everyone's probably blissed out at the moment, so we don't yeah. have any questions. <laughs> um, they might still be in Shavasana, hopefully. Potentially. <laughs> I hope that a couple of you are at least napping as well after that yeah. session. <laughs> All right, well, look, I'll leave it there since everyone's probably on their lunch break. But once again, thank you so much. Uh, if you also want to find Lisa's other session with us, you can find it in the V library. And I will also include the link to that video as well. But otherwise, look her up. She has incredible yoga classes online. And if you are lucky enough to be in Sydney, you can go join her for a coffee and a session soon, either in the new studio or you guys are doing it in the park as well, aren't you? Yeah, Centennial Park. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you again for joining us. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I'll look forward to seeing you online again soon. Bye, right. everybody. Have a great day. Bye.